Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog. And today you join me, I'm at a place that I might as well have all to myself. And it's a beach that I've come to a couple of times before and it's generally known for surfing, but there's nobody else here. When I arrived, there was two other cars and now they've just left. So I have the place all to myself. And I've come here the night before because I want to shoot sunrise in the morning. Now I was checking the weather forecast and right now it is absolutely totally grey, overcast and cloudy, but we're due some very heavy rain overnight. But just before sunrise it is about to stop. And you know what they say, after rain comes light. I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, that actually happens. Now it's been a long time since I was out with the camera. In fact, I mentioned it on three videos ago that the last time I was out in the landscape anyway was June 21st. Now today is the end of August, it's August the 30th. So that's quite a long time for me to wait well, to get out with my camera. Now I did get out with the camera to do those portraiture shots and I really, really enjoyed that actually. And thank you to everybody who has given me some great feedback on that episode. If you haven't seen that actually, I'll link to that episode here. But nonetheless, it was now my opportunity to finally get out. And I was really, really hopeful that I could get some nice conditions. What I did check was also the tides. And it is high tide around 15 minutes before sunrise. So that's perfect as well because the tide will be almost at its peak, but it'll be retreating back out on the beach. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get set up for the evening, going to change this into the bed, get my blankets and everything ready, and I'm going to have a well-deserved beer. So I'll see you all in the morning. But before that, this episode has a sponsor, and that sponsor is me. Now, if you're anything like me, you know that Ireland is a photographer's dream come true. From our rugged cliffs to our lush countryside, there's something truly magical about this place that just begs to be captured on camera. And that's where my photography location guides come in very handy. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, these guides are a must-have for anyone looking to make the most of their photography journey in Ireland. And what's even more exciting is that for the entire month of September, I'm offering incredible bundle deals on these guides, allowing you to save up to a whopping 35%. Imagine having all the insider tips and hidden gems at your fingertips, ensuring that you capture these breathtaking shots that truly stand out. Each guide is meticulously crafted, featuring an exclusive map, tips and recommendations for the best angles, plus my YouTube videos to give you a taste of the area before you even set off. So here's the deal, folks. If you're planning a photography adventure in Ireland, you won't find a better opportunity than this. These bundle deals are a steal, and they're only available for a limited time. Click on the link in the description to grab your bundle at an incredible discount and make this September a month to remember. Well, this isn't exactly as I had planned for it to turn out, but you know, it was going to be raining overnight and it did rain overnight. However, the forecast has gotten it completely wrong. Now, when I opened the window or the curtains in the van, I looked out and I went, okay, will I even bother? However, I always have a philosophy is that bad conditions do not exist in landscape photography. There is always a shot. Now, granted, it may not be a banger, but it still can be a nice shot. So I decided, you know what, I'm here. Let's go for it. Now I've come onto the beach here and 
the fog mist that was here earlier on when I first arrived is start, slowly starting to dissipate. So maybe this cloud will disappear. But for now, there's not much really in regards to action or any potential light or anything like that. The tide is going back out now. So what I've decided to do is to look at the headland that I have here, pop on my long lens and just pick out some vignettes and go for some longer exposures, be able to smooth out that water, keep some detail within that rock and I'm going to utilize the headland as well. Now, when I had first set up the camera, the far headland, I don't know if you can see it or not in your screen there, wasn't really visible. Now it has, so that tells me that this mist is starting to dissipate like I would have said. But I'm going to get this first shot anyway here. We'll see how it turns out. I don't know if it's going to be any great shakes, but still, nonetheless, it's a shot. And it's also good to practice, to, to hone back in my skills because it has been so long since I've been to the sea. So I'll show you the first shot anyway here. We'll play around. We'll see what else we can get. We'll go to the other side of the beach as well. Maybe we'll get a shot or two there. But yeah, here's the first one. I'll talk to you in a moment. Now I can see that there is a gap on the clouds in the horizon, so maybe the forecasts weren't that far wrong, but they were wrong for where I'm located. But what I decided to do is to go for some totally different types of shots. Now, there's a photographer that I watch, Gary Goff, and he has some phenomenal fine art photography. And what he does effectively is utilizes the scene to make them as minimal as possible. So I've decided to do that. There's one of these rocks that are over here. I'm using the long lens. I've zoomed into 200 mil. I actually went around maybe 20 feet that way so that I could eliminate every other distraction and just put that then in the bottom right hand third of the frame. And then I went for a eight second exposure. Now, it actually, I did it on purpose is to blow everything out except for this rock. And I think that will be a nice shot. On the back of the camera, it looks okay. I just gotta make sure that I'm nailing focus because I'll be able to change all of that when I get it back to post. But totally different shot in here for me. Thanks, Gary, for the um, inspiration. I hope you like the shot. I'll give you a look at it now. And I'm gonna head over this direction next because the way the water is now, it's going back out and there are some rocks that I hope will be able to give me some sort of night shot anyway. But yeah, I'll give you a look at this one and then we're gonna head over to the far side of the beach next. Driving over to the other side of the beach here, as you can see, I'm in amongst some rocks and the water is just about actually still touching the edge of the rock. So I've changed back now to my wide angle lens. I'm shooting at the moment at around 30 mil. I popped on my 10 stop as well. And that's giving me, allowing me to have a 30 second exposure. I am at uh, F9 and my ISO is at 100. And I'm composing the shot here in between the gap in both of these bits of rock. Now, there's a bit of few bits of seaweed and stuff like that as well. I don't know if the image is anything great shakes, but at least I'm in within the rocks now and I can play around here and hopefully find a nice composition. I see one, I think, over here, which I'll probably go to next. But yeah, this one, a bit meh, because I think because it's so gray and everything else as well. But I play around with it anyway first. Maybe I can get a different type of exposure time. We'll see what the optimum conditions will be. But I wait for water to come in like this to fill it up and then I grab the shot. I let that cook away then as well there. So yeah, this will be this one. I'll give you a look once it's finished baking and we'll move along and we'll see what else we can find.
Now for the next shot, I've come over here and there's some nice interesting textures in these rocks, but the water level now is a bit calm, so it's not much really action in relation to it, and it's a bit further out as well. So I'm getting an image which is just the, uh, more or less the sand, and again, there's nothing much in the headland. So I've now changed and I've gone into a portrait orientation because there's three rocks that are here that are all leading straight out into the frame. I'm experimenting here. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm going for another 30 second exposure. And looking at it here, if I can just check to make sure that I have everything sharp in relation to it. Yeah, it's okay. It's no major great shakes again, but I'm gonna continue along now because the water is covering some of the rocks that are over here. So maybe I'll get better luck when I'm over on this side. Now coming further over here, you can see that there's this set of rocks here which are just leading straight out. So I'm composing those into the bottom left of the frame and then moving out to the right of the frame. I do have a bit of light now that's starting to come ever so subtly on the headlands that are in the distance there. Sticking again now with the uh, 10 stop, going for that ultra long exposure, well ultra 30 seconds, but I might actually go into bulb mode and push that to a really ultra long exposure because I think I might try and do a bit more of that minimalist that I did on the far end of the beach as well on these set of rocks while I have the water around it. At the moment I'm shooting at f10, 30 seconds and I'm at ISO 100. I'll give you a look at this shot first. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to go for a much, much longer exposure and try and have a complete minimalist scene. I'm going to try and blow the highlights and just leave these here within the image. But here's this one anyway now and I'll give you a look at the next one after I get that set up and done. While I was taking that last shot, I spotted below me here in the foreground just a nice curve in a rock where the bit of a rock pool is protected against the movement of the water and then some nice seaweeds as well that's lining that. And it just so happens that it kind of starts off in a somewhat S-curve, so it gives me a nice leading line into the image and then it's looking off into the distance. And when I looked at the last shot on the ultra-long exposure, because I'm going for a minute and 20 seconds on these, um, the sky is being blown, I know that, but I'm intending to do that anyway. But what it's doing is it's creating nice layering within the image. So by coming over towards this area here, we get some nice layering here. Now this is at one minute and 20. I'm just going to have a quick look and I'll see. And I think that with the different layers that's there, that might work out. I don't know, it looks okay in the back of the camera. It all depends really on what I can do with it in post because today is definitely a challenge of a shoot. But nonetheless, it's still good to be able to play around with the gear and get different types of shots that I normally would get. Now, I spotted as well, just to the right hand side here, a one rock on its own. I might try and do again, again a bit of minimalist on that and just go ultra long exposure and have nothing else within the frame. But I'll give you a look at these anyway here now. The sky is starting to clear up. It's coming towards me this way so I can see some gaps in the clouds. So maybe I'll be rewarded with a bit of light. I don't know. Um, but. I'll give you a look anyway, like I said, at this, and then we'll move on. And possibly, maybe my last composition over here, we don't know, we'll see what the light will do. Now, 
Now, as the water is retreating out, actually, it is creating some nice movement around this set of rocks that I have here in front of me. I've moved into portrait orientation. I've taken my shot already, and you might be able to see here I'm getting flashing on the back of the screen. I don't know if you can or not, but that's telling me that my highlights are blown. But like I said, I'm doing that on purpose because I want to have them as a completely minimalist type of shot, so very high key. Um, with the water as well here, and at 120 seconds, so two minutes uh, of an exposure time, you're getting no texture whatsoever in the water, and you're just having the detail. And this rock here looks like it's coming out of nothing below me. Now, I am getting some nice light into the distance as well, but I don't know if I'm going to hang about or anything like that. Um, I do think that this probably will be my last one. Maybe I'll have another one just up over here, similar rock to this, but a bit more water, because as the water is going out now, it's getting harder and harder to find a rock that has the water around it. So I'll give you a look at this one here. Yeah, I'll probably go and I'll try that last one over there anyway, and that definitely will be my last shot from the morning. Now I am over at my final spot. I actually had one other spot between the last time I recorded the camera, which was another rock that was over here. But I spotted this rock here, which is completely covered in seaweed and also has some remnants as well of some kelp that's washed up upon it. And as the water is coming around it now, I think it will be a nice shot. I'm at one minute and 10 seconds now. I'm gonna still go to 120, but it's probably a bit too much because the sun is starting to show through the clouds behind me. But I'm gonna have a quick look here now as this counts up to 120 and I'll see how that looks out. I think it might be nice. I think, yeah, it's probably a bit too much actually. So I might bring that down to around about a minute. But I think this shot is nice because you get a nice contrast to the color. They're really, really vibrant in relation to that. Still with my 10 stop on as well. So yeah, uh, today has been totally different actually to normal. Now I normally tell people when you're out shooting, watch your histogram, don't blow your highlights. But today I blew my highlights on purpose. Maybe it'll backfire, maybe it'll work out nice. I'm not quite sure, but nonetheless, there's never any right rule or rules that are wrong. It's always about experimenting and see how you get on. And today was definitely an experiment anyway in completely the opposite conditions to what I had expected. Now the cloud all right is starting to dissipate above me, but it's a bit too late now because we're nearly two hours after sunrise. Thank you very, very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed this totally different uh, adventure. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And if you want to watch another episode, I'd recommend this video here. And until the next time, schlange voll.